Hello guys and welcome back to another episode with Tie Talk with Dan. Keep saying you got something for me. Something you call love but confess. Now by now guys, if you've been watching the channel long enough, you know that it ain't ever gonna stop where foreign men come over here to Thailand and keep getting involved with sex workers and hoping that they're going to make something out of it, get a relationship, get a girlfriend, get a wife or whatever. And people seem to feel confused about the sex workers' feelings. Do they like them? Do they care about them? Do they love them? Do they want to stop working in the bar and be uh, their girl girlfriend? Do they want to be their wife? People are just super confused and I really personally don't get it but I do understand that if people don't have experience mixing in these kind of circles then I suppose it can be difficult because these women are extremely clever at lowering your guard and making you feel like you're with a normal woman that's just doing what she needs to do in order to take care of her family her children, her mom, dad, etc. They'll always give you that kind of story and try to make out they are just a normal country girl at heart. Me love you long time. So we've got a story, guys, and it's a uh, it's interesting. Um, so I'm gonna share it with you. And this guy apparently knows the score a little bit, but has got involved involved with a sex worker anyway and it looks like he's developed some strong feelings. So let's get in to today's story. Hi Dan, love the videos. One of the better yet not that viewed channels on YouTube about Thailand. This is part story, part question, but I hope you can still give a little bit of advice on your channel. I'm a 38 year old single guy fairly decent looking if i say so myself a chatty friendly personality fancy education and very well traveled good job good parents wealth saved up live by myself in a house the whole shebang <laughs> I'm not a bad catch, if I do say so myself, and I've been around quite a bit myself throughout my years. I'm just very picky when it comes to girls who I actually like. Now, I was recently in Bangkok for 40 days, and while there, one night met a girl working in a go-go bar in Nana Plaza. Let's call her Julie. Cute, bubbly, 24 year old with a hint of something mixed in there. Absolutely adorable and hilarious to hang out with. Initially, I had zero interest in her beyond running around at night and having a great drinking buddy. I was fully aware of how we met and the transactional relationship we had. This was not by a long shot my first rodeo, though it was my first time in Thailand. I also have literal family in Japan that used to work as hostesses, so I'm quite familiar with the systems, the industry or what you'd call it, perhaps also doesn't bother me as much as it would others. Quickly we simply started hanging out when she wasn't going to work. We'd go drinking and partying when she wasn't working and I'd pay nothing else apart from some occasional drinks. We started getting quite close. I joined in on video calls with her young daughter whom she had an ex-Thai boyfriend who turned out to be a crappy guy and got to know more about her situation, how she ended up at her job, what she did in the past, her family situation 
getting drunk and sharing our childhood traumas, showing me horrible messages from previous customers. Some guys here are genuinely despicable, introducing me to friends and so on and so forth. She was starting up a small street bar with a former Mamasan, which I verified was actually true. I've been there, I've helped them set things up with posters, maps and that kind of deal. And as far as I know, she has since then stopped working in Nana Plaza. We would be quite open with each other in regards to what she did for work, even if it was now more in the chatty, drinky business. And I would often go to her bar and just have some fun with her mamasan if she was busy talking to another guy. When he left, she goes back to me. Another dude comes, she gives me a little wink and bounces over to get the new guy to buy shots and so forth, back and forth. I asked if she wanted to join me for a trip to Wahin and I'd pay for her lost income at work. She agreed and off we went. The trip didn't go too well though. She was incredibly tired from the non-stop drinking and lack of sleep from her work and had little energy to do much. She kept being called up by her mamasan asking when she'd be back and so forth. The trip ended up only being two nights as the bar couldn't function without her. She was the main attraction so to speak and without her not a lot of people came and drank she told me. Clearly very frustrated that she had to go back the next day. It didn't help that we had both caught a cold and walked around coughing a lot. Me being a smoker didn't help either. And it was very clearly unattractive to her. And I get why no one wants to kiss a dude coughing his lungs up. I felt a bit ripped off since I had compensated her for her income for quite a while longer. I visited her bar a few times but at the end of the week said I wouldn't really be spending any more money. It was drama free, she understood why, apologised for the lack of time together and simply thanked me for the help so far. I should perhaps add at this point that we haven't ha actually had sex or anything else. I don't much enjoy having sex with people who aren't clearly Rural life, Isan, Thailand, probably a funeral guys or something of that nature. I don't much enjoy having sex with people who aren't clearly wanting to have sex with me. So paying for that was never really my intention. I simply wanted someone awesome to hang out with. And things just sort of went from there as I found it hard to meet anyone apart from other tourists. I met another girl, let's call her Karen, that I hung out with, who ironically was way, way, way too into me. Didn't want money and just wanted to hang out but things escalated quickly in terms of jealousy, confessions of love after only a few days, and I definitely got a bit of a crazy vibe from her the day before heading home. I went to the street bar just to say goodbye, bringing along the other girl who was essentially staying with me at this point, and from that point on, things really changed. Perhaps the fact that I showed up with someone else made her realise that I did in fact have other options. That while I liked her, I wasn't going to endlessly simp myself for her. Maybe she saw how extremely infatuated Karen was with me and realised I might actually be worth going for. Or perhaps it was just the reminder that I was going home and unlike many others, weren't really sure if I would bother coming back if it wasn't to meet someone. I have long-term old 
uh, friends all around the world asking me to revisit them. Nice. Now Karen was wildly jealous and left for another bar alone after around 20 minutes. Julie also seemed far more interested in me now than before. We had a surprisingly heartfelt goodbye. I gave her a small goodbye present I had bought while in Wahin. And she said she wanted to give me a present before I left the next day. Karen was essentially furious the entire night though. The next day, we met up briefly at a restaurant. I was again eating dinner with Karen and Julie gave me what felt like a very thoughtful gift. We had an almost awkwardly long goodbye. Keep in mind, Karen is sitting right next to me, clearly both not quite wanting to say goodbye yet. <laughs> After I went to the airport, Karen went with me and dropped me off. Me and Julie again video chatted and texted before heading on the plane. Since I've gone home, she now messages me many times a day, sending photos, video chatting with her and the staff at the tiny street bar that I eventually came to know quite well. Silly memes and jokes and so forth. The attention from her has skyrocketed and a lot of time she even calls me when there's just no customers at the bar just to chat in between. Karen went all out in the meantime to the point where I had to make it extremely clear to her that we were not dating, not in a relationship, not boyfriend and girlfriend and that while I had enjoyed her company very much and I liked her, I didn't love her. The crazy messaging and non-stop calling luckily died down after that and she took it better than expected. I had feared for a lot of drama or that she would go by Julie's bar and start a fight. She was that type of girl. Luckily nothing of that sort has happened yet. You're a fucking ugly bitch. I want to stab you to death and play around with your blood. While I might not have fallen all that hard for her initially, over time I have to admit I have quite strong feelings for her now. But, but, for what should be very obvious reasons, I'm worried. And I'm treading very carefully on the ground that I walk on. Particularly, I am, I'm worried about the long con, even more so as I have very little personal experience in that regard. I was without a doubt too generous with my money initially when we met. As I said, I'm quite well off. And while the last few weeks I essentially spent zero money on her, I still worry a little. I've made it quite clear to her that I won't be sending her any money while I'm at home. I made that clear while still in Bangkok for Valentine's. I'll be sending her a large bouquet of red roses, her favourite colour, but again, no money or anything of monetary value. I'm also not asking for an exclusive relationship while we can't be together, and I'm sure that she now and then finds a decent customer from the bar to take home to add a little extra income. Honestly, that doesn't really bother me. I've mingled in those types of circles before and have quite a sexual history myself. In the morning, if my face is a little puffy, I'll put on an ice pack while doing my stomach crunches. Hello? But can you give me some feedback insight into what I should be looking out for in regards to not simply being taken for a long ride ending in disaster. I told her I'm not even sure I'm going to return to Thailand, Bangkok. I found it often to be a rather depressing experience if you poke beneath the surface. I know we're in Bangkok, Thailand. 
and have instead said I'd be happy to help her get a tourist visa to come visit me in my home country. She has been neither super thrilled nor particularly negative on that suggestion. I don't know if it's because she doesn't believe it can be done. Apparently, other guys in the past had offered to marry her but then just cut contact and never came back. Perhaps my country is wildly uninteresting to her, or if she doesn't care because no money is involved for her. Though if she wanted, I would have assumed there were a lot of easy scam opportunities in there. I don't feel she ever took advantage of me in a way I didn't essentially invite her to. No bad feelings in that regard whatsoever. In fact, there were plenty of times where I thought if she really wanted to rinse me, she could have gone way further, fairly easily. In total, she probably got around 50,000 baht for her time, for helping her start up her tiny little bar and just for helping out with minor, in my perspective, issues she had. Money. Uh, I made money I made it clear I really didn't expect anything from and an amount I'm perfectly fine with losing if nothing ever goes further than it is now. Hey fellas, look what I found in my pocket, look, a year's salary right here, That's what I call them, fun coupons, see that, a fun coupon. I'm on the sloop, John B. She would often seem confused or even start spontaneously crying when I told her I simply wanted to help out a bit and that I didn't really want to buy her and that it was perfectly fine with me if nothing else happened. Instead of asking for more, she would continually thank me for the help I had provided her, telling me, you've already given me too much. Not exactly what I expected to hear. As a personal note, I'm just in general quite a generous person and I've helped many people out in my life with amounts far larger than this. It's not the first time I've experienced people being a bit flabbergasted. I just try to make a tiny contribution to making the world an ever so slightly better place to be. But then again, I also didn't expect to hear that in her few years doing this work, she had already had five different guys ask her to marry them, and she declined them all. Though having seen pictures, stories about these guys, I also can't help but think, yeah, but it makes sense you wouldn't want to marry a person like that. Often not exactly the best catch in the sea. Many already have a wife they aren't yet divorced from. Do weird stuff like cross-dressing, or are almost three times her age. I've heard some funny and wacky stories. I like to dissect girls. Did you know I'm utterly insane? But what should I be looking out from here on out? I'm quite fine with her seeing other guys while we're not together. I might see other girls as well. We're not in a relationship after all. My tiny theory is to focus on inviting her up to my country for a few weeks or as long as reason reasonably possible, as a bit of a tester. After all, that's something she will financially gain nothing from and would purely have the point of us spending time together. Well, and a great free vacation for her, obviously, I'm fully aware. I also understand that I can't simply expect her not to make any money at her job. She's doing it because she needs money after all. After all, she doesn't have the luxury of paid vacations the way I do from my own job. Nor does her parents have the luxury of a well-functioning pension system. So in many ways, I find it fair to pay for her time, especially at this point in our non-relationship. And while listening to the horror stories from Thailand, of which there are mind-bogglingly many, and meeting these women, I also can't help but think there is a bit of a selection bias in what gets talked about. 
After all, it's unlikely that the couples for whom these things work out would ever feel the need to make a lot of noise about their happy relationship. In almost all situations, romantically related or not, people rarely make a big deal out of things going smoothly. Instead, the people yelling the loudest are usually the ones for whom things went the worst. Anyway, any advice on the typical scams guys get played by in these situations would be very much appreciated. From here on out, I really don't know what to expect. Your insight, if given, would be much appreciated. I've left out a lot and yet this turned out much longer than I expected it to and for that I give you this tiny written apology. My bad Dan. Best regards. Wish to stay anonymous. 2000 years later. Right guys, where to start with this one? This was a very, very long story and it was a very different story as well. You could tell that this guy wanted to get more out of this woman and he wanted something proper from this woman and tried to ignore the fact that she's a sex worker. Now, a lot of people can say that I can be quite brutal with my advice, but I just don't want people to get hustled or scammed, yeah? This kind of stuff goes on all the bloody time, yeah? It's not rare at all. Um, you paid this woman, you said, in total um, around 50,000 baht to help her start up her small bar business where she's going to get more customers and stuff. You never had sex with a woman also, so you were like the best customer in the world. Now, a lot of these women don't get the credit that they should receive. They are a hell of a lot smarter than guys, uh, well, some guys give them credit for. They know most of the time whether you've got money or not. They will weigh you up. They will ask the right questions. They will try to feel you out. And a lot of them, the smart ones, are in it for the long con, yeah? However you want to define the long con is entirely up to you. But for me, let me simplify. These women know that you may not be the type of guy to just cough up 5,000, 10,000 uh, baht um, every week or whatever and get that kind of money out of you. They know they have to play the game with you. They have to try to make you feel like you're special, make you feel like, you know, you're a good friend and basically try to gain your trust as best as they can. And when you go home, they're going to communicate with you like crazy because they know that you've just left. You're probably going to miss them. And then they can give you stories about, oh, I'm trying to set this business up. I've got this problem. I've got that problem. But never ask you for money. They are just waiting for you to offer. Now, you offering to take her back to your own country, yeah? She's probably been offered that a load of times because this woman you stated in your story, um, the mama -san wanted her back at the bar after just two nights because she was the, the attraction at the bar. So she must have been super hot and had many men saying to her, yeah, I want to marry you. Yeah, I'll pay you a monthly salary. She'll have heard it all, but she knew that you had money. And she also knew that she could play you in a way where you would pay for her time and she would not even have to have sex with her. You know, she can just chill out and get some sleep and get some rest before she goes back to the bar. So, of course, she's going to stay in contact with you. Um, she's not going to be that happy about you taking her to, a con uh, to your country unless she's going to get a lot of money from it. Let's get real, yeah? But I know how guys feel when these women are basically trying to treat them like they're different, like you're different, you're such a nice guy, you're such a warm guy, you're a foreigner that I've never come across before. They're just looking at you more as an easy mark. You're an easier person to generate money out of like you said in your story, they've got cross-dressers and people that are into crazy stuff that a woman like that normally has to deal with. So when she's got an easy mark, such as yourself, and I'm sorry to state it in such a brutal way, she gets a great rest and she can still make money. Now, if you offer to pay for 
um, what she makes at the bar and extra money as well that she'll lose from getting customers etc then of course she'll more than likely debate on whether to go to your country or not but even then she still might not do it because you're just thinking all that hassle to go all the way there etc am i going to get a monthly sponsor out of you you've already said that you're not going to pay money this and that so she's got to work hard really just giving you stories and trying to make you feel sorry for her or hoping that you're going to help her out it's too much of a big risk she needs something guaranteed if she knew that you would give her a decent amount of money to go to your country then it'll be an experience for her she gets paid but also if she gets the chance of possibly getting you to be a monthly sponsor um, for a decent amount of money let's say 20 30 40 thousand baht per month and can get you hooked then yeah she might go to your country but otherwise no she'll just wait for you to come back and she'll start getting harder with you as time progresses to try to get something out of you she's already got fifty thousand. you already give her that bug she's gonna try to to keep going and a lot of women kind of work in this way now let's move over to the other woman yeah uh, which is super popular here in thailand um karen karen she's a uh, typical she just goes in tells you she loves you after a few days gets really jealous and really obsessive more than likely she's not had a lot of customers and more than likely she knew that you had money so she was just going in for the kill pretty pretty quickly trying to get you to fall in love with her and as soon as you told her that you don't love her you not got those strong feelings and she was happy to get the hell out of there because what's the bloody point it was your first trip to thailand thailand is a totally different beast to other countries the way these women think and work is very different to sex industries in other countries yeah they all try to hustle you but they just do things in a different way here um so if i was you i'd just look at it like you had a nice experience yeah you did have quite a few things wrong and hopefully you learn from that and the next time you come you'll be fine now there might be people in the comments that state to you oh no she seems like a good girl or whatever you get all sorts like of, of type of types of men here and a lot of men that have li even lived here for 15 20 years still get blagged still get scammed still get hustled there's men that have been with women for like five years plus um that were the woman's literally sleeping with other men and 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 only with them for money and they're eating the money all the time you get so many things going on here so you'll get a lot of different diverse comments i just try to brutally be honest and tell you how it is just to try to i try to do it guys so you don't get hurt so you don't get scammed you might have loads of money or whatever but you've still got feelings you're still a human being yeah you can still get depressed you can still it can still affect you in a way where if you meet a nice woman next you won't trust her do you know what i mean it can have it can do things to you um when you meet actually a, a nice woman so yeah i just literally i wouldn't bother mate and i just move on um and just enjoy your life and try and meet a good woman that suits you all the best